Oh, I just got a hair in my eye somehow. Hey people, not sure I have much to talk to you about today. <laughs> I did try to color my hair purple, little bits of it. I decided to do a little under layer. I'll go ahead and call them bangs because I know some of you call them fringe, but I'll just call them bangs because if you call them fringe, then you'll think that's quaint and I'll be cuter. It looks, it really just bleached and the purple didn't really take. I mean, it's purple-er in places, but it really just looks like a, a faded hair dye. It doesn't look bad. It just kind of looks like highlights or something. Turn you around here. I didn't end up getting the color that I originally thought I was going to the store for, and I think I should have gone for the one I originally went for. It was a day when I was at my parents' house. I visited with them for a little bit. And we were watching a documentary style special about Seabiscuit. I suppose a lot of you have seen the movie Seabiscuit. The thing that struck me about this documentary, and it's stricken me in other stories as well, is how ordinary people and events become so much larger than life. And see, now Seabiscuit is a legend, but you know really that only took place over the course of a few years? It was such a minuscule little part of history. Everything was just kind of a convergence of circumstances that made it turn this little horse into a legend. But there are so many legends in history that we look at, and they're larger than life. And we admire them and we ask questions about which dead historical figure would you be most interested in meeting? And everyone has an answer. But then history shades that answer and the stories told make the hurt people involved so much larger than life. And when you step back from it and stop looking at it through this lens of admiration and awe, I mean, there should be some of that, I'm sure. But there were just people, just, just ordinary people. You think about the founders of America, the people who drafted the Constitution, and they were just people who came together and said, something's got to give, something's got to change. What they accomplished was incredible. But on the other hand, America was a lot smaller then. We tend to look at history through the lens of our own perspective of what we know today. And it's so interesting to look back and try to put yourself in the position of the people then. A while back I was trying to write a story that was set here in my home city. So I had to go and do a little bit of research. And the story is set around 1870. So I went back and looked at newspaper articles from 1870. And it's really interesting to read commentary written up about Abraham Lincoln because they did not like him at all but he was a contemporary to them. And so it'd be like someone writing about Obama today, which we think nothing of. There are people who like him and people who dislike him. And eventually down the line in history, I suppose the storybooks will decide whether he should be liked or disliked and everyone will go along with that. But Abraham Lincoln, you know, he was just a man. It kind of reading some of those articles and learning a little bit more about what people were thinking then from those people, you step back and you start wondering if Abraham Lincoln had handled things a little differently, would there maybe have not even been a civil war? Being an American, even being a southerner, <laughs> but being an American in this 21st century, it, it almost sounds sacrilegious to say anything negative about Abraham Lincoln. And I'm not really, but I'm just speculating. He was just a man who the retelling of what he did has turned him into a legend. It really takes so little. It's not that the feat accomplished isn't great, but it's just one feat, or it's just a person putting one foot in front of the other, or it's just a circumstance that has caused a person to choose one choice or the other, and it could have gone either way, and they know that in their heart. And that's the reason a lot of heroes have a hard time accepting that mantle. And I guess I'm talking through all of this just to come around to we're all just faced with choices from one moment to the next. And we never know what we're going to choose in a situation until we're in that situation. And there's no one wholly good and there's no one wholly bad. And I think it's worthwhile to question what we've been told all of our lives. I think it's worthwhile to question our heroes and test them and see if they're worthy according to our own standards and not just trusting someone else's. And that's my deep thought for the day. Okay, so I did have something to talk about. It's amazing how that happens. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.